Continuing with our review of U substitution, I wanted to work a couple of definite integral examples so we can see that the final step is not just finding the antiderivative function, but applying fundamental theorem of calculus part one as well. Now remember, U substitution says we have some sort of function that is being operated on. It's either being raised to a power or it's put into uh, you know a tangent function machine or put into a, a function machine where it's raised as the power to e or whatever that operation is we want to make sure that its derivative whatever's being operated on that derivative needs to be there as well or the differential to be more precise and if we have this going on then we know that we have a good candidate for a U substitution problem because we're going to take the derivative of that function being operated on and then we can completely rewrite what's happening in terms of U and DU. So remember this is what we're looking for, something being operated on, raised to a power, put in some sort of function machine that manipulates that function. We're looking outside of that manipulation, we're looking for the derivative of what's being operated on. So I just wanted to remind you that's what we're looking for here. And this is why knowing those derivative rules are so important. Because here it clearly looks like what's being operated on is the secant of x. And it is being operated on, it's being squared. So the derivative of secant, remember, is secant tangent, well that's there as well, secant tangent is there as well, so this can be rewritten, we rewrite the definite integral, remember, simply as u du, it's just as simple as that, and so we find the antiderivative function, and remember you have two choices, and I told you when we learned this, I'll give you two choices. You can either use the indefinite integral all the time, not just occasionally, but all the time, meaning you're finding the meat of the antiderivative function. You have to remember to put plus C. Anytime there's an indefinite integral, there could have been a constant in that antiderivative function. You can alternately, although I don't, because this is my kryptonite, this is my issue, you can find new U values and do a definite integral in terms of U, and then you don't have to back substitute. Remember, this was the alternate way that I said that you could do this. I don't ever do it that way because, again, algebra is my kryptonite. I do it this way. Also, if we know that secant squared is the derivative of tangent, we could alternately have said then tangent, although it's not being operated on, I guess you could say it is being operated on. It's put in a function machine that raises it to a power of 1. Then du is secant squared x dx. And look, we wind up at the exact same place, u du. The antiderivative still 1 half u squared plus c. And you say, well, here we're going to back, back substitute in secant of x squared plus c. Here we're going to back substitute, when we take u home, tangent of x squared plus c. Well, just like there's a relationship between sine and cosine in that right triangle trigonometry that we learned, there's a relationship between secant and tangent as well. And so it turns out that both of these are correct choices for antiderivatives to this function. All right, so I am going to, let's just use this one here. We'll come back and we'll work with this one right here. We said this is the integral of u du, so the antiderivative is 1 half u squared plus c. When we take u home, we wind up with this is our antiderivative. Now for a definite integral, the next step is just to take the meat of that antiderivative function 
and pick up and show the AP reader that we are now going to apply Fundamental Theorem Part 1. And then we go about doing that. We plug in our upper limit, secant of pi over 4 quantity squared, and then subtract plugging in our lower limit, secant of 0 quantity squared. When trig values show up, we do have to actually evaluate those. This is like 1 over the cosine of pi over 4. Remember the cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, so the secant of pi over 4 is going to be 2 over root 2. That quantity gets squared. Minus 1 half. This is 1 over the cosine of 0. The cosine of 0 is 1. That's quantity squared. So this is 1 half times 4 halves minus 1 half times 1. We wouldn't have to clean it up beyond this step right here. If it was a free response question, we could walk away right here. If it's a multiple choice question, we would have to go ahead and clean it up, and I, that choice would be a positive 1 half. All right, so let's work this final example here. Again, what we're looking for is we're looking for some function f of x that is being operated on, whatever that operation looks like. And we hope that outside of that operation, that all that's left is the derivative of that function, maybe straightforwardly the derivative, or maybe the derivative where we're off by a constant, and dx. Because if that's the case, then we definitely have a u substitution candidate. And this one is straightforwardly f prime of x. So what we have here, the indefinite integral, is u to the 1 half du. We are going to apply the power rule. Hopefully you see that's 2 thirds u to the 3 halves. We have to remember to put plus c. Every time there's an indefinite integral, I must see plus c. Even though we're going to do fundamental theorem and this really has no bearing on what we're going to do here, for proper notation, anytime you show the AP reader an indefinite integral, that antiderivative function better have a plus c on it. We brought u to the party. We're going to take u home. We're going to show the AP reader now that we are doing fundamental theorem. So I'll go ahead and just finish out this. This is 1 cubed plus 1 to the 3 halves. I'll finish out fundamental theorem here. There's the upper limit minus evaluating things at the lower limit. And this is to the 3 halves. This is 2 thirds times 2 to the 3 halves. This you can see is 0. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0, so that goes to 0. So here's our answer right here. Okay, so there's a good review, a good, fairly thorough review of u substitution and all of its pieces and parts and nuances and all of the things we need to think about when we're doing u substitution. So in another generation or so, we might be able to use a calculator to find all integrals, but for now, we're getting ready for the AP exam, and half of the AP exam is without the calculator. And I can't tell you how many alumni students come back and tell me, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for making me learn calculus without that calculator pacifier. Because my math professor, my Calc 3 professor, my Diffie Q professor does not allow calculators anywhere in the classroom. This definitely is true for now. You are going to encounter a college math professor that does not allow you to use a calculator to evaluate your calculus whether it's a definite integral or whatever it is. So you have to practice finding integrals by hand until you're really, really good at it. So that's it for this lesson. Come to class next time and we'll do some u-substitution problems.